Uh, yeah, so you, you've played Alan sort of through radio, TV, sort of different formats. Mm. Um, do you still find challenges uh, with playing him and particularly now going to, to a movie? Yeah, challenges, yes. You have to, uh, I mean, he's very enjoyable to play. He's very sort of, it's like putting, you know, I do things in between Alan and then I go back to Alan. Alan's sort of always there in the background. He's like sort of a, this person I inhabit from time to time. Mm. Um, and, um, but uh, I, I, it's saying, do I find it a challenge? I like to try and make it a challenge so I don't feel bored with it and I, and, and I, it, I need to get excited about it. And the only way to do that is to sort of introduce an element of risk or try and push things or explore, you know, different avenues so you, so you don't repeat yourself. Um, at the same time, you can't lose the DNA of the character. So you have to, um, you know, to try and do, try and do, I mean, for example, when we did the, we did the episodes online before we did the film, um, before we did these TV specials, we did these, these episodes, webisodes, if you like. And um, that was a challenge because it was just Alan close up, just him on his face, no other, pr pr no other supporting characters. Um, and again, the film is it's on a much bigger scale, so the challenge there is can we make a, a story and, and uh, with m enough momentum and mm. interest to sustain 90 minutes. Mm. Is the siege idea that, that you guys run with, is that kind of Alan's excuse to be you know, Roger Moore in The Spy Who Loved Me, is that a good um, uh, Well, I suppose Alan always has a slight fantasy that he might be able to you know, be be an action hero, but of course, in reality, he's not. He's just he's like everyone else would be in a situation that's just scary, which is just scared. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it's it's a way of doing that that's not too outlandish because you can't have, you know, there's no way Alan would be a genuine action hero because he'd be too, you know, he'd be petrified. Mm -hmm. So so you have to try and uh, satisfy that urge uh, at the same time as sorry, I'm going to sneeze. In. Oh, bless you. Oh! It's okay, they were, they were <laughs> relatively clean. Um, so, uh, Alan, um, so, um, yeah, so, so having the siege in the film um, allows to explore that side of Alan, sort of that action side of Alan, but of course, uh, the only sequence that does occur in the, in the film that, that has the action in it um, is a fantasy sequence, uh, because uh, we have to keep it sort of parochial and 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 local on a small scale. If you start making it really ridiculous, like Die Hard, Alan doing all adventurous things, it just becomes unbelievable. And however sort of outlandish the character of Alan is, you have to keep it rooted in uh, sort of a reality. Mm. Uh, otherwise, you, it, it stops being funny. You have to keep it sort of real. Mm. You also have, uh, I think, probably British cinema's most memorable toilet scene since Train Spotting, uh, and a trouserless scene as well. Is there any sort of points of humiliation that you? You wouldn't touch with him. Is it kind of a bit, you know? Um, you no, is the answer. I, there's no, there's no area I wouldn't touch if I thought it was, uh, it was funny enough and believable enough. Mm. And again, you know, you have to have these these moments in a film that are slightly grotesque, but they have to be justifiable and not just gross in a kind of a disgusting way. That that that's too, which you see in a lot of American films, sort of the, the, the gross out moment in the film. Uh, I, you know, we wanted to avoid that. We just wanted to be embarrassing, awkward, uh, uncomfortable, um, mm. and 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 you know, we're pushing the envelope, but trying to keep it just about believable. Mm. Do you stay in touch with sort of Alan as a like a cultural thing away from this? Because there's the accidental partridge thing on Twitter. I don't know if you've ever seen. That I, I, people have shown me, but I don't. I don't know. I don't read everything that's written about Alan. I think that's sort of not really healthy. I mean, I'm glad that he has a cultural impact, and and I know that people do say. I mean, I sometimes see presenters saying things. I think, oh my God, that could have been come out of the mouth of Alan Partridge. So, uh, it, you know, it, I'm glad that it has that impact. But you, I try to just. If you start reading what other people think of the character, you start to lose grip, tra track of it. I've got to remember, just be true to the character and try and make him consistent with what I think he would do and the writers think he would do. Um, because if you start listening to everyone else's opinion of, of, of what, what direction Alan should go in, then you, it becomes like a decision by committee and that's not mm. good. Do you have a favourite partridgeism as well? Things like Jurassic Park, all the things that he comes out with is the one that stands uh, out for you? I don't know. Uh, they, I, they, they, I think they, and at the time they were written, I always found them funny, you know, so... I quite like cash back. I think that's funny. It makes me laugh, I suppose. Um, uh, yeah, there's. Uh, um, I mean, yeah, they were all funny at the time. You know, Jurassic Park, cash back, uh, back of the net. You know, 
all those things. We, you know, we I mean, when, when we started doing that, we, 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 we eventually we did the second series. We started saying, let's try and think of things that people will say yeah. to make people say it. Because we knew that if we had Alan say it, then people would start saying it in the street. So we thought, mm -hmm. let's try and make people say this.